Okay, I want to maybe just fill in a few little gaps in what I've been teaching in the other two videos about poker. And this really is basic. I'm not claiming to make you into some incredible poker player. Just teach you the basics. Um, the basics of winning a cash game, because this is cash games poker. Um... I'll do some tournament stuff later, but I'll need another app for that. I won't be doing it on this app. Probably have to use Hold'em or Fold'em for that. But uh, I just wanted to get through the basics here. This is the third video. The second one was the one with the James Bond music. So we're playing Texas. $100,000 buy-in. And it's good to set yourself a goal. Our goal here is going to be, once again, a quarter of a million profit. So I need to turn this 100,000 into 350,000. So we did it, the first video we did it in about half an hour, the second video we did it in about 20 minutes. So nine queen. Um, given that we've just arrived at the table, we're in middle position. And we want to just pay attention to the other players for now, rather than playing this hand. Might be an inviting hand to play at other times, but look, we've got... One razor and lots of callers. We've got an overcard there. The king's an overcard to us. So we were at a reckless table here. Might actually just want to leave and go to another table if it's going to be like this. We'll have a look at how raggedy their hands are. If their hands are stupid, then we'll leave and go to another table. And that'll be the lesson from, from this. <laughs> this bit anyway. Let's just move that out of the way. Two minutes into the video and we haven't played a hand yet. We're waiting now for small blind. Maybe I've been disconnected. I think I've been disconnected actually. Okay. Um... I'm going to leave the room, um, wait a minute, I'm going to find another table. Let's do the find another table button. Because I think maybe the game got frozen, but anyway, either way, I don't care. It was a funny table, I could tell that there was just so much recklessness there. Unless they all had premium hands, but even if they did, that flop must have been pretty dangerous for one or two of them. There were lots of kind of shared dooms in there. I think they call them bloppers. Anyway, right, 7-9, nearly connected, sort of nearly connected. Um, just going to do a small raise here. Why did I raise on such a funny little hand? Well, it's one of the things they say in poker. If you're going to play a hand, you should be prepared to raise a hand. And I think that's true. We certainly can raise it now. We've got two pair. That's very good. Someone might be on a flush draw, but... 810 might have a, uh, you know, a straight on me there. Okay, now it's not looking so good for me. Any 8 now has got the uh, straight. So... So look, I mean, there the lesson from this hand is when you're looking at cards like this, the cards that give you the pairs are going to be the cards that give other people their straights. And there's probably going to be a showdown here, even if I... I'm, I'm not going to call because I think someone's got the eight there, possibly up in the top right corner. I thought the top left had the eight at first, but more, maybe they both do. Who knows? Maybe we're going to see an all in now. But certainly someone's got the eight, I think. Yeah. I think possibly top left was kind of trying to represent the eight and top right actually had the eight. And then that happens when you try to represent something, sometimes someone else will actually have the thing you're trying to represent so you can't actually scare them down. But yeah, see the danger of these hands that are in middling cards is that you're, you're, you're sort of treading over
You're treading over the area where these straights can happen. The signal's very bad here. Whereas if your hands tend to be at the top or bottom of the scale, you're less kind of less likely to have straights if they're aces or kings or queens. It's less likely to be interfering with straights. You know, you, what fulfills your hand. So this king has fulfilled my hand, but it's not really got too close to fulfilling a straight for someone. You see. Now, king three is not a hand that I'm particularly fond of. The kicker is very weak. Three is the kicker. I've got a pair of kings with a three kicker. And we've also got an overcard, the ace, so someone could have an ace. It's folded me because uh, um, I got disconnected. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this video, really. It's just I'm trying to move my phone around to try and find a better signal somewhere. Hmm, that's a bit better, maybe. Ah, oh, someone could have the ace. Someone could have a pair of nines, someone could have eight nine. I think they had an ace with something. Another king three. I'm going to call, just because I'm getting cheesed off now that I'm that getting disconnected halfway through every hand. And really, you should not be playing poker for real money if you're in any danger of your device getting disconnected. This is play money, obviously. So like I say, if you're playing for real money, always make sure you've got battery, uh, you've got, you know, that's definitely worth 10,000 rays. Perhaps it should have been five because I'm probably going to scare them off, but never mind. It's good to win without a showdown sometimes. You just don't win as much. Uh, but just the act of winning is quite good psychologically for the table. It helps you to dominate the table. Ace five is a good hand uh, because it can give you a straight straight that we call the wheel. Ace, two, three, four, five is called the wheel. Um, I'm going to go for five times. When I raise by a larger amount, like ten times, it's not so much because I'm trying to tell them I've got a great hand. It's, it's, it's more because I just want to make more money off the hand because I think I'm going to win. But I suppose that is telling them I've got a good hand. <laughs> um, fold. <laughs> she said call or raise. She didn't give me the option of folding in her voice. Well, the turquoise woman. So we're down a little bit at the moment. Jack seven, I like the suitedness of it. But again, it's not really gonna give you a straight. Eight, nine, ten, Jack, you'd have to get all three cards in the connection, but still, it's suited. I mean, it, it could give you a straight, but it'll be a gut shot straight unless it's literally made on the board as soon as, the, as, soon as it comes in. Oh, good Lord. Um, I'm going to raise it 5,000. Almost a straight flush. I'm gonna I'm gonna soft play this because I, I I want them to get I want them to get a card that helps them. Let's just look like I'm trying to buy it at the last minute there. I don't think I made as much out of that as I could have done. A flush, very nearly a straight flush. Now they were fishing anyway, so yeah, fishing a fish then means they're just you know they haven't really got anything. They're going right the way to the the river. Uh, nah. 
so you've got the, the flop, which is the first three cards, then you've got the turn card, and then you've got the river, which is the final card. So a fish is someone that goes all the way to the river. Um, it's, this is not the river and fish, it's just because they're fishing for a card. They're hoping to find it. They would. I should have been in this hand, shouldn't I? Never mind. There's a possible uh, full house on there. You know, Queen Five or a Queen Ace would have a full house on there, wouldn't they? Hard to make money on this hand though, because they're they're pretty scary cards for anyone to look at. Uh, if I was raising there to console myself, I don't think I would be making more than about ten on here out of that hand. How much did they make? Five point five eight thousand. So you see, there wasn't there wasn't a huge amount of money to be made on that hand anyway. That's the consolation because it was such a scary looking hand. Eight four, no. Lots of action here. Lots and lots of action. And then a flop comes that's like so not an action flop. <laughs> Always makes me laugh. Yeah, I've got a king. Yeah, I've got an ace, and then there it comes five, ten, four. <laughs> Oh no, I had six seven, I had six seven. <laughs> well you can't say that now because that's the trouble. It's hard to continue to say that you've got an amazing hand if the flop is one that will favour less amazing hands. So you've got to watch that as well. You've got to make you've got to make your story you've got to work out what your story is and your story has to make sense. Otherwise they're gonna know you're full of it. Story has to make sense. Even when it's not true. Uh, I had a feeling there was a good hand coming. Uh, I'm first to... I'm just going to raise it up five. I don't want to scare them out. It's a suited ace jack, so it's pretty good. Oh god, so many callers. If this person calls as well, I don't know if I should even be in this pot. I think I have to because it's ace jack. But it's too many callers. It's too loose. Okay, I, I've got to go all in. I have to. I have to be all in with this. So, uh, hoping to double through now. Or triple through if they're both called. No, just the one. Six, nine. That is not going to win, mate, for you. They were certainly fishing for some kind of weird straight on the river. So, quarter of a million, but we still, we still have a hundred grand. We want, we want 350, don't forget, because we want to get the hundred grand back as well. They are tilting now, this player. This is interesting. The player on the top left is doing what we call tilting. It means that they are just, they've lost a massive amount of chips, and so now they're just shoving everything in on the next hand out of desperation. Uh, they, it just goes, you go mad. You will tilt. It happens to everyone. I have tilted. But usually when I tilt now, it is fake. Usually I lose a big hand and then I get dealt the most amazing cards and I pretend to tilt with my amazing cards and then you get callers. Um, I very rarely actually tilt. When you get experienced as a player, you don't tilt. But you see it here, the places like here. So he's tilting. He'll have absolute rubbish. He'll have something like seven jack or something, that guy at the top left. Look, eight two, the worst hand in poker. He was thinking, if I just shove all in again, the poker gods will smile on me with the worst hand in poker, and they didn't. So try not to tilt. Try not to do that. But just know about it as a thing. Queen jack, quite a strong hand. Now we're back to normal again. Um, that's worth 5,000. Even if my position is terrible, I'm going to be first to act on every round. Look, they've raised to 18. I don't think I should call that. Um, and it, the, again, the more callers there are, the more callers there are, the worse your hand becomes because you just so many chances of someone beating you. There's more chances. 
See, someone that's got these rubbish cards now, like 8 2 8, that 2 8 would win this hand. But obviously, the fewer players you're up against, the stronger your hand is. We've got aces there. There's a reason they were all going into this hand, because they all had a hand that looked good. And as you see, in poker, aces normally win. I was still looking to get this 100,000 back. Where are we now? 15, 15 half minutes in. Just want to get the 100. Oh, now, suited connectors. Not as high as I'd like them to be, but they're pretty good. I'm going to definitely go for 5,000, because especially as we have position, I am the dealer, which is the best position to be in. Small blind on my left. Just deciding what to do in the big blind, and now... After the flop is dealt, it'll be the small blind acting first. And I've got a good hand there. That's good enough to go all in with. I have to hope nobody gets a straight. Oh dear, some, they're looking on straight draws. Looking for the jack, looking for the gut shot straight. Looking for that gut shot. And I've got a full house there. The boat, as they call it, it is called a boat. 434,000, 612 dollars more than made my money on that one. So, I hope that's been, um, look at her ghost face. I hope that's been instructive. That's my third and final tutorial on poker because I think I've told you more or less all the basics. Might do some others showing you some tournament play. Uh, but as you see, you can make money pretty damn fast in poker. Good to have an aim. It's good to have a goal. I, I set myself a goal there going in with 100,000 float. And I have to come away with quarter of a million profit. And as you see, not that hard to do. Um, if you look at my figures, look at the amounts on those three videos, you'll see that they are consecutive, those videos. I didn't... Um, at least I don't think I, I made any huge losses. I, I may have had another round or two in between, I think. But um, all in all, you can steadily make money uh, with this play money. And, and, and when you play poker for real money, it's even easier to win because um, people don't want to call so often. People are more nervous when you play for real money. But that don't forget that includes you. You will be more nervous. Um there it is. 18 minutes and bang on 18 minutes and we'll see you soon.